Somebody's written that they recently lost a loved one due to COVID, and it's been very hard to cope with this sudden death. There are probably others who are suffering in different ways. In such times when there's such difficult, such difficulty, how can we obey the command to rejoice in the Lord always? Yeah. <clears throat> well, whoever that is, I, brother, sister, I sympathize with you completely. It's not easy to have death in the family, especially of a loved one, and particularly if that person was not an old person who lived long, but not, not lived a very long life and close to you. There is grief. And the Bible does not say that grief is wrong. It's natural. In fact, if you don't grieve, you must be an unnatural person. Natural persons will grieve when a loved one departs, or even enemy departs, worldly people don't grieve. But when a loved one departs, the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians in chapter 4, when somebody dies, the Bible does not talk about them dying. The Bible always uses, the New Testament always says they are asleep. 1 Thessalonians 4.13, those who are asleep. So somebody slept through COVID. It's very interesting. You read the New Testament. It doesn't speak about people dying. It speaks about people. If they're not born again, they've died. I agree. But if they're born again, they're asleep in Christ in the grave, one day to be raised up. They're asleep. That don't grieve like the others. He doesn't say don't grieve at all, 1 Thessalonians 4.13. But don't grieve like all the rest of the world. Because those people in the rest of the world have no hope. The grave is the end. But for us, we know that these who are asleep will wake up one day when Jesus comes. Verse 14. God will bring them with him. They are with the Lord now. And God will bring them with him. And therefore, in the midst of that grief, I have hope. I may not be shouting hallelujah, but I have hope. This person, I'm going to see this person in a few days. And in that I can rejoice. For example, supposing you have a very beloved son, a mother or father, and your son got an excellent job uh, with great opportunities and a nice salary. And uh, he's therefore moving away from your home and going to this other place is something you and he both long that he would get that job. And you say goodbye to him at the airport. You know, you're not going to see him for maybe one year. Well, a loving mother and father may have a few tears coming down their eyes. He won't be seeing our son for a year or so. But <laughs> you're not sad. He's gone to a better place. He's gone to a better job, the thing you wanted. That's exactly how what we call death is. This person has gone to a better place. The funeral is where we see him off at the airport. Goodbye. But it's not a permanent goodbye. It's like waving, waving to somebody at the airport. That's a funeral for me. Uh, I'm going to see this person again. It's not forever that he's gone. That's the hope of a believer. It's wonderful to be a believer. And so we sympathize with those. And so when it says rejoice in the Lord, it's not rejoice in the death of your loved one. No, you can't do that. The Bible is realistic. Rejoice in the Lord. In other words, rejoice in the fact that God is still on the throne. And he's in control of this universe. The only time you can stop rejoicing is if the devil takes over control of this universe for a moment. And that's never going to happen. Never. God is always on the throne. He's always in control. Even when things look very bad, God is on the throne. He's got a purpose in everything. And he will see you through finally. And therefore I rejoice in the Lord. Philippians 4.4. 4. The Bible is realistic. Again I say rejoice in the Lord. And so in the midst of any trial. We can say well God is still on the throne. Like that beautiful chorus we sing. God is still on the throne. And he will remember his own. Though trials may press us and burdens distress us. He never will leave us alone. He will never forsake his own. Or like the other song, we sing, no, never alone, no, never alone. He's promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. There are wonderful choruses like this. 
that we can sing to ourselves even in times of great trial that remind us that God is still on the throne and we rejoice in that. Amen.